but I, I... Reggie. I am Reggie Middleton. Uh, I am, I originally got my fame and fame around 2007, eight. Uh, I'm a financial engineer, very strong in valuation, um, Marco investing. I predicted the collapse of Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers, Washington Mutual, basically all the money center banks that collapsed. It wasn't very difficult to put through this in 93. So um, I did rather well in that from a return perspective until GAP changed the rules, mark the market rules, and then two plus two equals, guess what? 93. 93. Uh, Right about that time, one of my clients got me into Bitcoin. I read the white paper, the Bitcoin wiki, my jaw dropped. And I've been working on trustless decentralized finance since early 2013. I fancy myself the guy who created trustless DeFi. Nobody seems to like it when I say that, but um, <laughs> I filed a bunch of patents uh, around the world. They've hit, and I am going to focus on FTO and the intersection between crypto and AI. I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna have AI do 60 seconds of what I'm gonna present. Yeah. Now, you know how dangerous this is, so yeah. okay, I'm being great. Make it live. It is live, yes. Okay, I am doing a presentation in front of quantum computing experts, AI experts, and crypto experts. And I would like for you to use the information that we've gathered over the last few years to answer this question. In 60 seconds or less, from a purely software engineering perspective, not a legal opinion, identify whether there are any active patents without reciting patent numbers, patent titles, or the owners of the patents. Describe, do those patents describe techniques such as those implemented in Bitcoin Core, Ethereum, Solana, and tokenized asset systems, which would include stable coins and real world assets. Respond yes, uh, similar techniques are documented, or no, none found, or unclear, and provide two to three neutral, high level descriptions of the overlapping steps. Absolutely. Continue. You're welcome. So just to give you that crisp summary you can use on stage, from a purely software engineering perspective, not a legal one, yes, there are definitely active patents out there that cover techniques similar to what Bitcoin Core, Ethereum, Solana, and tokenized asset systems do. In other words, similar techniques are documented, and a couple of neutral high-level descriptors would be things like the creation of distributed ledger transaction templates, the integration of internal or external data to finalize those transactions, and the signing or validation steps that happen on a ledger, whether it's decentralized or not. So that should fit nicely in your 60 seconds. One quick question before I go. Uh, have any of those patents, without naming patent numbers or titles or the owners, faced validity challenges from uh, the PTAB, such as IPR petitions, and have any of them survived? Absolutely, one last quick answer on that. So yes, some of those patents have indeed faced PTAB challenges like IPR petitions, and yes, a number of them have actually survived those challenges, which generally makes them stronger and a bit more robust because they've been through that legal test. So you can definitely say that in your presentation. Good luck out there. Thank you. Um, I don't know that was, that was pretty good. Cool. Cool. No Which AI good. was that, by the way? ChatGPT? That was ChatGPT. <laughs> you two well, different voices now. Yeah. <laughs> um, my question is really from the pro project perspective. Another question um, is: uh, Let's say you have a really, really great idea in, in blockchain, crypto centric idea, that um, maybe you've already raised money for it. Maybe you've sold tokens and raised money. Um, what can you do if you, uh, in terms of? Uh, making yourself more attractive to, say, VC investment um, uh, in terms of quantum, quantum resistance. Um, what, can, what, what can you actually do? Would, would, do VCs stop looking at um, projects now because they're not quantum resistant? Or what is their, their approach? Let's try and address the question directly. Uh, I'm not confident on the premise because how do you prove that you have quantum resistant technology? But let's assume you can do that. And I'm not a quantum expert. 
first thing I do is, if you actually had that, I would patent it thoroughly around the world. And if you patent it and get the patent ring correctly, you now have, from an investor perspective, a strategy of a put option. Let's suppose your business fails, right? Your quantum, a quantum resistance patent is most likely worth more than an entire blockchain business put together. So even the utility for the actual tokens, and it doesn't have to be blockchain, by the way. When people speak crypto, they automatically say blockchain. Blockchain is a subset of crypto. It could be a graph, a knowledge graph, it could be pure peer-to-peer -peer without a chain, etc. But let's forget the nomenclature. You can actually tokenize the actual value, and that gives maximum utility, particularly if nobody else has built a quantum resistant machine. But there's the reality of how do you prove it? Um, part of the reason why I gave the AI, um, and if you can't, it's very difficult to do that. It took me months, by the way, to get that AI to be uh, unbiased enough and knowledgeable enough to finish an answer like that. So I know it looks easy, but it's not like most other things in life. Um, if you were to do an FTO analysis, you would find that if that hypothetical company had a quantum resistant patent, and then you decided to build one, discover one months or years later, you're walking on patent territory. The crypto industry, and for the most part, even some of the AI industry, have done things that I've never seen any other industry do before. And I've been looking at investments from 1991, 92, at a very, very high level. Um, they put hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars into a industry and never bothered to look to see who owns the technology. Crypto is the only space I've seen that. Uh, if you're not familiar with intellectual property law, which most people aren't, including lawyers, what that said was basically, um, Bitcoin that you can download from GitHub right now, Ethereum Solano, is very similar to what is patented by an unnamed patent owner. How many times have we heard that today? As a matter of fact, has anybody heard it at all? And a lot of people are say, no, it's impossible. I've had this discussion, I'm not gonna name it too, but it happens all the time. It's open source, so it can't be patented. Well, if you look up what open source means, it's a license that has to do with copyright law. If you look up patent law, totally different. So. Just because it's open source doesn't mean a person or company that open source it owned it. I can steal your car, nice Tesla. I decide to open source it, give a free rides. That doesn't make it my car. I stole your car. Um, the research that a company should do to ascertain the risks and rewards is called a freedom operator analysis, FTO. It's just not done. If you go to Qualcomm and NVIDIA, and say, I want to propose a new quantum chip. You want to build a fab? The first question they ask you is, not who are you and do you own it? Same thing with biopharma, uh, gene splicing, any industry, they're going to ask if you own it. In crypto, they don't. FTO would be the first thing I do, and I'd show that I own the technology, I'd show a patent, and then that's the put option to negate you know, the... But does the FTO survive? A Q day. Uh, legally, it would. Okay. Okay. But practically, uh, practically, it all depends if you actually had what you said you invented, which goes back to the uh, proving quantum systems. Can you actually prove that you have uh, crypto resistant technology? I don't know enough about not crypto quantum. I don't know enough about quantum. That's not my wheelhouse. But I do know business, and I know finance, and unfortunately, I know the law. Great, that's one, <laughs> wonderful. You're the oracle of IP. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Um, Stu, can we open it up the audience now? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so what I'd like to do is start with a couple questions. Um, and um, maybe we have someone, maybe the people can. Okay, sure, Mike. Mike. Yeah, good. Yeah, thanks, Mike. They can uh, introduce themselves and ask uh, a panel member, pick a panel member or a particular panel member. Hi, I'm Emma. I work in VC, but just curious for you guys then, what are you investing in at the moment that's within this realm? Does anybody want to answer, answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> Pass. Uh, Aski's first deployment. 
Uh, quick disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer, so when I said I know the law, I know the consequences of not knowing the law. So <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm a technologist and I'm an inventor uh, and a finance guy. Um, I'm putting my resources over the last two years into agentic economic computing. Uh, again, crypto is not about blockchain. From my applications, crypto is trustless uh, value transfer. I can transfer value for myself to the VC in the back without knowing her. Sans counterparty risk, credit risk, etc. The value chains that people are calling crypto and blockchain, it's not about price go up, price go down. Uh, Bitcoin, if you're going to measure by utility, is already not worth much. So, you know, that discussion is not where the value is. The value is we do have agentic computing takes off, take off, it will take off, it will easily surpass human. You transfer value maybe three times a day, 10 times max. Think about your agents. You drive a car, tow booth, negotiation, you're a high net worth individual, you're in traffic, you negotiate with all the cars in front of you. I'll give you 30 cents, five dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars, step aside, let me go through. Uh, your Samsung refrigerator orders food, your cell phone does no matter what, etc. Each client will have transactions at a multitude, an order of the scale, more frequently and probably at higher volume, if not higher uh, actual trade content than any human. The, I was asking questions about a young man right here, and I call him young because he's younger than me. <laughs> and he was discussing the, what is it, micro? Microtransactions. Microtransactions with the micro uh, stable coins. He's on the right track. And this is already done. And as the agentic adoption increases, and it's guaranteed to happen, absolutely guaranteed, then the money, the market will. The crypto layer are the chart points for AI. And believe it or not, I don't believe the big AI companies understand that. And most of those short points are A, already patented, and B, very, very difficult to design around if you patent the, prim the primitives, which goes back to the conversation we were having earlier. Uh, so, you know, I don't want to name big companies. I'm not going to name anybody if you notice I went through, you know, pain, it's not the name. But that's where I'm putting it because it's the choke points that give you the leverage, the infrastructure, the foundation that gives you the leverage. And it doesn't really matter where the intelligence is commoditized, and I fully believe it will be. It's getting cheaper and cheaper every month, and that half-life is actually decreasing. I've never seen anything move this fast. So why gamble on things that are guaranteed to inflate in uh, supply and deflate in value when you can get the actual choke point of the total? To multiply just add to that very quickly, I'm not a lawyer either, but the reason I got involved in um, the world of policy um, is in around 2004, the European Parliament almost made um, invalidated all IP. They said you should not be able to protect IP. And I became the figurehead of the pro IP campaign, just randomly. It was, uh, and I ended up all, uh, in Brussels for two years, and it almost went through. Um, unfortunately, it didn't. I think the structures of our world are going to change so rapidly, and the power is moving from the industrial world, which is the patent world and the IP world, into the tech world. And the power that these companies have, the Googles and the Xs, to sway public opinion really, really fast, I don't think we can necessarily say that copyright, that patents, will necessarily be here in 10, 20 years' time. Um, I wouldn't invest on that basis. I, I think we're going to see some fundamental changes. We can already see it with copyright, that, that the, they're watering down a lot of those areas to allow these companies to, to continue to grow. So uh, that would be my corollary to that. Shall we have one more question? Can I just do one quick about uh, spoofing proofs? Um, I actually run a venture backed startup that does verifiable AI memory, and we use mathematical proofs to make sure this is like 100% good to go and they're succinctly verifiable. So it might take us a lot of computation to run through that, but you can check it very quickly on a phone or another device. When you mention spoofing proofs, are you talking about spoofing mathematical proofs or in what sense can a quantum attacker 
proof of proof that's not medical. Well, I mean, I, I mean, it depends on the key generator, right? At the end of the day, I mean, I think some of those key generators have been spoofed already in some cases. Um, although, uh, what you're doing actually is is kind of interesting um, because, in principle. Uh, I mean, quantum memory in terms of where you guys are going is definitely applicable, especially for a lot of different settings. Uh, one in terms of security, but also just one in terms of processing, right? I mean, it's, it's extremely important. Um, I think the interesting question for you guys actually might be, uh, you know, in terms of just in general caching, right? Um, do you think quantum computers are going to continue to cache information? I and mean, this is a this is sort of the algorithmic question, right? I mean, caching as a um, as a mechanism is becoming more and more obsolete. But in your case, it's almost a necessity as an intermediary in terms of managing information um, and encryption. So, um, from your perspective, actually, you guys might be able to help augment um, some of the uh, cryptographical capabilities of of the software only. Capacities, right? Versus, um, you know, so, so yes, in principle, what you're saying is correct, but I think that many of the random uh, key generators that are out there right now um, have been compromised in some way, right? Because they can't be basically just spoofed from that perspective. That's super helpful. I think more of like zero knowledge groups where mm -hmm. like you're going to have prover and a verifier, and it's if you cheat, the verifier like knows that you cheated. Mm -hmm. but I think what you said generally applies there as well. Uh, so maybe I should get a patent on it. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Too late. <laughs> well, I mean, this this, go, this goes exactly into the question of uh, identity, right? I mean, that's that's where we start to go into that whole realm, and that's a whole long conversation, um, I'm, I'm, which I'm very happy to have with you, by the way. That's a that's a really good thing. So, congrats on that you guys going. Thank you. Sure. Okay, just an interesting place to look at uh, where the markets are going is follow pens and look at family citations from intellectually dense entities. I'm not going to name what you can get through there and just look what they're filing. A lot of them go through efforts to hide what they're filing, but you can see where the smart guy is going. Anybody else? Any other questions? That was, that was awesome, guys. You did a great job and thanks for moderating also. Thank you. Thank you.